what gets clearer and clearer to me is how many ideas and labels and uh, descriptions I've adopted throughout my life to try and make sense of what's going on, to try and um, know how I should respond in certain circumstances. You know, if I see people doing something that I, isn't, I don't find acceptable or um, how to respond when people are using their language in really harsh, disrespectful ways or you know, just everything really, you know. And my whole approach to life was based on all of these descriptions and labels I'd learned and that was um, just seemed to be the way that everybody else was going about their life and so I did the same. And I learned um, to apply these labels to myself and to, to try and work out who I was and to then act from there and work out what I should be doing with my life and what it all meant and yeah, all of these complicated ideas that I had and you know, even on a very everyday level it was, um, it, it was just all about these different descriptions or labels and the focus was completely on those so I'd be really focused on my own descriptions about how I felt about something, you know, was I happy, was I sad, was I bored, was I um, ecstatic, was I, you know, all, all of these different labels and descriptions and for me when I came to the Balanced View training what was amazing was to be introduced to something that was completely constant in my own experience and I could see when I just took a moment to look that all of the descriptions were, were continually changing. You know, there was this seamless flow of experience um, and in the Balanced View training we'd, we'd just call that data. You know, it, it, it's impossible even to say where one thought begins and, and where it ends. It's impossible to say when one experience begins or one, when it ends. So, so it's actually a, a seamless flow. It, it's, it's completely um, effortless. You know, there is just all of this data just shining forth and I, I don't need to do anything for that to be the case. You know, the, the thoughts popping into the mind stream of feeling in the body, a uh, you know, memory from the past, a thought about your empty tummy or, you know, just all of this descriptions just going on and, and I don't need to do anything for that to be the case. It just happens in a completely spontaneous, effortless way. And um, it was amazing for me to discover that when I just stopped describing all of that dynamic energy just for an instant and I relaxed my mind and my body, I noticed that there was an intelligence by which all of it was known. There was something that was aware of all of this ever-changing descriptions, this, this flow of data. And every time that I took just an instant to relax my mind and my body, there it was again, there was this intelligence, there was this bright knowing. And so it starts with each of us recognizing that there is something about us that is constant and reliable, something that is always on, really getting to know the nature of our mind. And so that introduction is as simple as just to stop thinking for a moment recognize the intelligence that is hearing these words. Recognize the intelligence that is looking through your eyes, that experiences everything you're experiencing right here and right now. And it is crucial that each of us becomes familiar with the actual nature of our mind, that there is this intelligence that is wide open and there is all of this data effortlessly shining forth from this intelligence. And why it's important is because our mind pervades and permeates and is essential for all of our experience. There's nothing you've ever experienced that happened anywhere other than within the vast expanse of your mind. No matter how you label it or describe it, it's still data shining forth within this vast expanse of mind. And the reason that this is important 
is that we have been behaving as if these descriptions, these labels, these data streams had a nature somehow separate or apart from within this vast expanse of mind. And when we give them this independent nature, or we try to, then we give them power over us, power to inform the way that we act and the way that we speak, the decisions that we make in life. And it's like we're a, we're a puppet on a string, just being jerked around by all of these ever-changing descriptions. So a good example for me was this, this constant assessment for myself of, of how I was doing, how I was feeling, was I happy? Um, did, did I like the people that I was with, for example? And it was really interesting to, to look at that, to look at the way that my mind would work in that circumstance and to see the way that it was always changing. So I'd decide on a group of friends and perhaps it was just people that I'd known for a while and my descriptions and my feelings about them were continually changing. You know, one, one moment I thought they were just, you know, they were just great, they were, you know, they, these are the people that I'm, you know, I just feel so close to and we share so much. And then somebody would say something and somebody else would do something and I'd be like, who are you people? I, you know, I, I'm really, you know, I, you're so different from me and you know, I feel completely alone. And then somebody else would say something nice and kind and, oh no, it's actually great to be here. And, and it's just really actually recognizing the reality of our experience and becoming comfortable with that seamless flow. Allowing the flow of data to be as it is. And the way that we do that is through the simple practice of short moments of just allowing everything to be exactly as it is. So in a short moment, we relax the need to try and control the mind. In a short moment, we relax the need to try and contrive or work out how we should be responding. Your mind is already bright. Your mind already sees everything exactly as it is. Your mind is already completely spontaneously beneficial. Now that might not be what you were taught or what you've learned but you can discover whether that is true or not by allowing the mind to rest in its natural state for short moments repeated many times. So if all you take from this meeting is for today to test this out in your own experience and see what happens. Whenever you naturally remember, just relax your mind and your body and allow everything to be exactly as it is. Allow your mind to think as it will, allow your feelings just to do whatever they're doing, allow the strange sensations in your body just to proliferate naturally and resolve completely naturally. Allow everything just to be exactly as it is. And recognize open intelligence just for an instant. And what's open intelligence? Stop thinking for a moment. Do it right now, again, recognize that openness of intelligence. So take that and test it for today and see what happens. When I did that, what was incredible for me was to see the immediate result of doing so. Immediate result, as soon as I recognized this wide open expanse of intelligence, I saw that I could relax with all of this need to try and hold everything in place, to try and understand everything, to try and work everything out. And I could just simply allow myself to be this beneficial being. I could allow my mind to act in its natural state. Simply effortlessly slipping into this flow of experience without the, without the need to try and control it. And at the beginning that seemed really challenging. Because, well, what happens when I, I don't try and control my anger? Again, test it out for short moments, see what happens. The natural responsiveness of the mind is already the case. And this is why the practice of just short moments of complete relaxation is so potent and so profound. Our mind is already switched on. We're already completely, intimately connected with everybody and everything. That's already the case. We don't need to effort and work at that. 
And so this recognition of the actual nature of reality, of this relationship between data and open intelligence, seeing that all of the data were inseparable from open intelligence, like the colour blue is inseparable from the sky, gives a completely different perspective on all of the experience. And so the immediate result is this sense of relaxation, this sense of empowerment, this sense of no longer being a victim, no longer being this puppet being moved around by all of these strings of description. And so for me that was incredible, that was fascinating. Immediately I began to try this, I saw the nature of reality directly in my own experience. The interconnected nature of everything as a direct experience. And every time I relaxed for a short moment, there it was again. So short moments repeated many times. And because I saw this immediate result, I wanted to know more. And because I wanted to know more, I decided to check out what else was being offered here. What could enliven this instinctive recognition further in my own experience? What could make this a lived reality for me, rather than just an intellectual concept? Because I'd, I'd, I'd read all the books, you know, I was, I, I was reading all these books and still playing these games, and that was what was confusing for me. But with this simple practice of short moments, I began to take responsibility. I began to take responsibility for my own instinctive recognition, short moment by short moment. This, this here and now is our opportunity to recognize open intelligence. This spontaneous here and now, and this spontaneous here and now, and this spontaneous here and now. This is our opportunity. So when I saw these results of immediate relaxation, immediate insight into the nature of reality, then I wanted to know more. So I started to listen to, to the media on the website, the, the hundreds or thousands of hours of free talks. And the more I listened to these talks, the more obvious this intelligence became. So I continued listening. It was, like, okay, great, that's, that's simple. And then began to participate in trainings. And being with these incredibly powerful texts that just evoke this recognition, and doing so in an environment with other people, where we could ask questions about this, and ask questions of each other and of the trainer, who had more experience, who'd been before, just, just made it easier for me to recognize this actual nature of reality. So, for me, the commitment was, n I, I've never committed to anything. But there is something that delivers incredible and really practical results, because my relationships began to change. They were no longer based on these ever-changing descriptions. I like you, I don't like you, I'm attracted to you, I'm not attracted to you, you're cool, you're an idiot. You know, that, that was the basis of my relating. And it meant that there were very few people that I actually wanted to speak to, and when I did speak to them, I decided actually, no, I don't want to speak to you either. <laughs> That, that, that was my, uh, there, was, there was something I could go to every person in the room and work out why, you know, why I didn't really want to speak to them. And um, it's just so limiting to live like that. And so to approach life from the perspective of open intelligence and to utilize what supported me in that, this, there was no commitment necessary. It was just kind of obvious. Well, that's what I'm going to do. I, I didn't really feel like I had a choice because nothing else had worked for me in that way. Nothing else had provided me with that, that same depth of insight and recognition. And then this simple methodology where I could train that up further. It wasn't some random happening that, you know, that I, I had that experience before, you know, I was sitting on the mountain top and the sun was setting and, oh my God, it's all one and then coming down off the mountain top and not wanting to speak to anybody again, you know, and it's, well, that's great, but what good does that do me in everyday life? And so here is this systematic method, method, method of training up the nature of your mind so that you can recognize it and then apply that in everyday life. I mean, that's just incredible. And it really works. And so for me, I just continue to come back and come back. It's like, well, that's, that's what I want to do with my time. This is what I'm really interested in. I've always been interested in it, and the, the results are just way beyond anything I could possibly imagine. 
And there is this skillfulness that then naturally comes when we allow our mind to be exactly as it is. You see that the fundamental nature of mind is completely wide open and clear regardless of the data. Like, um, like a crystal ball is completely unaffected regardless of the descriptions that appear within it. So that gives you a fantastic overview of knowing exactly how to respond to each situation. There's no rule book. You rely on this incredible creative openness of your own mind. You become familiar with that through this practice of short moments. And um, you, you'll see skillfully how to respond when people are using their speech or their actions in ways that you find distressing or unacceptable. And sometimes it's better just to say nothing, and other times you can speak very clearly and very directly if that's what's required. But it happens effortlessly without you needing to work out or have a contrived response. It's the same with your friends when they're behaving in ways that you, you really don't feel comfortable with. You rely on open intelligence and I've seen in my own experience that when I do that, my example of no longer playing those games has a really powerful effect. I don't usually need to say anything. If I'm not judging and criticizing and blaming other people, for everything that's going on, I'm taking responsibility, I'm recognizing it as data, shining forth from open intelligence, and other people see that that is a possibility for them too. And then that's a decision they make. But that effect permeates in a really um, subtle but powerful way. So it's your example that makes the difference, not usually what you say. That is included, but it's actually about how you live, how you relate, how you act. And that's what we learn from, what we see around us, and that's why the community is so important too.